Hey guys, this is Lee here, and in this video, I'm going to share with you the seven most important knots you need to know for sunfish sailing. And in other words, the seven most important knots you need for sailing, period. And at the end of the video, I'll share with you an extra knot, a bonus knot where you can use in certain situations. When you go sailing in a sunfish or any other sailboat, there's a lot of specific names for a lot of parts of the boat. And that also includes the knots that you use. There are specific knots for specific areas of the boat and they all have specific uses. So you have to really know what knot to tie in what situation and what they do so you can have an enjoyable experience sailing. If you use the right knots correctly, your sailing experience will be a lot more fun than if you just randomly tie something that doesn't work. Before we get to the video, I'd like to thank all the subscribers out there who are helping the channel grow. So if you would like to have more content like this and other sailing tutorials, please subscribe to the channel. So once I get to a thousand subscribers, I'll be able to live stream videos straight to you like sailing tutorials and information to help you become a better sailor. So thanks a lot for subscribing and now to the video. Have you ever sailed your boat and all of a sudden the sail starts to inch down lower and lower? Well, maybe it's because you didn't tie the right knot. Have you ever wondered why other people's boats look really nice and neat? They're probably using the right knots. And in a lot of cases, the correct knot can really keep you safer. So in this video, when I show you the knots, I'm not gonna show you how to tie each individual knot. That'll be in descriptions down below and I'll have videos on how to tie the specific knot. The first knot I wanna go over is a very simple knot. It's called an overhand knot. We use this knot to sometimes act as an insurance policy so you don't lose the primary knot. For instance, like on this clove hitch. We could also use an overhand knot to act as a dead end stopper. So when you could do another overhand knot, for instance, like at the end of this outhaul. The reason why I like to use this type of knot versus just putting a bowlin at the end of the end cap is that if I want to pull the outhaul of the foot of the sail really, really tight, it could stretch that much longer. So some of these knots may have different names. So if you know that the knot that I showed you has a different name, please leave a comment down below and tell me. Also, if you like what you're hearing, please smash that like button. Helps out the channel a lot. The second knot I'd like to talk about is the stopper knot. There's a whole bunch of different stopper knots that you could use, including the overhand knot that we just talked about. There's two knots that I'd like to talk about, the figure eight knot, and also what I like to call wrap around your fingers a couple of times and do an overhand knot. I like to use the wrap around a couple of times around your fingers and do the stopper knot knot because I find that it doesn't let go as easily as a figure eight knot. Where you would use a figure eight knot in a sunfish and any other sailing boat is at the main sheet because if the sail goes out, you don't want the main sheet to go flying through the main sheet block. You could also use it on jib sheets and spinnaker sheets also if you feel like tying a stopper knot on a spinnaker sheet. The third knot that I wanna go over is the cleat knot. This knot is very important because it holds up the sail at the sunfish. It's also used to hold dock lines and the boats next to a dock. So whenever you wanna help out or crew, you have to know how to tie a cleat knot. If you don't tie a cleat knot correctly, bad things can happen. Now this next knot is really, really important in the sunfish because it holds up the sail and it holds up the upper spar. I'm talking about the clove hitch. Now, if you do a clove hitch correctly, it could really be tight around the upper spar and hold your spar in its place. A lot of people have issues having the clove hitch slip that's how come I like to put a couple of wraps of Gorilla Tape or Duct Tape above the clove hitch. Also with the clove hitch, I like to do an extra wrap and that extra wrap is ended with an overhand knot just to provide extra insurance so it doesn't slip out. So stick around to the end and I'll show you a bonus knot that you could use in certain situations, which is really handy. The fifth knot I like to talk about is the slip knot or a trucker's hitch. What this does it puts extra tension on whatever you want to hold up like the sail or if you're going to put your boat on roof racks or a trailer the slip knot or trucker's hitch helps put tension that doesn't slip later on and keeps the boat in place the slip knot adds a turning point to the halyard and so that turning point is called the purchase 
and it also if you have a purchase it actually gives more leverage so when you want to lift up the sail that last couple of inches it makes it easier and you could use less force to lift up the sail. One very important hint when you're using a slip knot is do not make the loop too small. I would make it at least an inch or two if not a little bit bigger because if the slip knot slips and tightens around the piece of line before it can get out of the knot, it is really, really difficult to remove. Now the sixth knot is probably the most important knot that you would find in all of sailing and all of boating. And of course, that's called the bowline. What's important about the bowline is that it's an easy knot to tie once you learn how to do it. It's also very easy to break open if you need to release it and it does not slip. On the Sunfish, you mainly see a bowline when you tie the main sheet to the bridle. People also use bowlines at the end of the clue. They also use a bowline to tie down the vang on the bullseye fairly. There's other couple of practical uses that you'll see bowlines used on Sunfish. You could use a bowline around the mast to act as a towing line. And then if you wanted to tow more boats in line with each other, I would suggest to tie a bowline around the mast and the other bowline to the bowline itself so the forces are not all directly on the mast, they are shared bowline to bowline and it reduces stress on the boat. You could also tie a bowline to the bow handle but I believe most people do not recommend towing a sunfish by the bow handle. Another area where you would see a bowline is the head of the sail is usually held up by a bowline either at the end cap or on the sail itself. And another practical use for a bowline is when you're tying the boat down to a trailer or roof racks, I start the first end of the line with a bowline on the roof rack or the trailer. And if you're on a boat and you want to get some water overboard and you can't reach it, you could tie a line to a bucket handle with a bowline, throw the bucket overboard and retrieve it by the line. That will not slip, you won't lose the bucket, and then you could get water overboard. So as you can see, there are several uses of bowlines in and around all types of boats, and I just covered a couple of them. And the next knot that I want to go over is the square knot. The square knot is used in many places on a sunfish, mainly when you'd use sail ties. When you use sail ties instead of sail clips, the sail ties are tied on with a square knot. After I do a simple square knot, which is left over right, right over left, I also like to do a half hitch on each side of the square knot just to make sure the square knot does not slip out. Square knots are notorious to slip out if they're not tied tightly enough, so I do that extra hitch to make sure I don't lose my sail tie. And once you lose one sail tie, it can go on and on, blink, 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 blink. So I went over seven knots that you need to know when you're sailing a sunfish. And here's a couple of other knots that you could definitely use. One is the wraps and half hitches to finish off securing your boat. I've driven down, down I-95, all the way down to Florida with these knots and they never really gave me problems. When you are towing a boat or you're putting a boat on a roof rack, I would suggest, especially if you're new to it, after you tie the boat down, to stop after a mile or two or even five to recheck your knots and make sure they are tight. If you don't, you could have a disaster on your hands. And now for the special bonus knot. This knot is used for when you have a piece of line, especially a small skinny line like an outhaul line or a Cunningham line on a sunfish that's really, really too long. If it's too long, then it gets all over the place and it becomes spaghetti. So what I like to do is I like to do a braided handle. I have this handle on my right side of the loop. I make another loop and it goes into the loop. I can tighten it by pulling the right a little bit. Okay, so I got a loop here. Take another loop from the handle end, stick it underneath and in that loop. Now you put the loop in the loop. So you continue to do a loop inside the loop until you get to the desired length of the handle. You could put the end of the line through the last loop and now you have your handle. Now to get this out, it's pretty simple. You take the line that you took through the last loop and then you just pull it until the whole chain comes out. 
So there you have it. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. I read all the comments. If you got any value from this video, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you know when we come out with a new video. I really appreciate it. Thanks, and I'll see you on the water.